Okay, this is the M1 paper from January 2024. Question number seven, and this is a vectors question, in particular, vector equation of a line. One of these questions where we have a ship moving around. So what's this one doing? This one starts off with position vector 19i plus 22j, and it's traveling with a velocity of 12i minus 16j. And part A is quite simple, because part A says, can we work out the speed of S? So hopefully if you've been doing these, you should remember, this is one of the things where they try and catch us out. The speed is just equal to the magnitude of the velocity. So in this case, the magnitude of 12i minus 16j, and we do that then as being the square root of 12 squared and minus 16 squared. That works out to be equal to 20, and our units at the moment is kilometers an hour. So part E, relatively straightforward. Part B, time t hours after midnight, the position vector of s is given by little s there. Can we find an expression for that? So yeah, that, that's one of the standard things that they expect us to do with this work. Just remind you of what's going. You don't need this diagram at the moment, but I'm doing it just to explain uh, where the equation's coming from. So the vector equation of a line is r equals r0 plus vt. But why is it? What does that mean? Well, we're normally given, as we are with this one, the position vector of where it starts off from, r0. And then what we're told is the velocity. So if we're told the velocity, we know it's gone along in that direction, but it's 12i minus 16j, 12i minus 16j, 12i minus 16j. Keep going. What we're looking for is our general r here. Where are we generally? And if I want to work out that vector, that vector is r naught, but not just plus 1v or 2v's or 3v's, it's plus however many lots of time we've got, so plus vt. So all that is is a very quick reminder to you of why we have r equals r0 plus vt, but that's what I'm going to use, vector equation of a line, in order to sort out this first part. So what have we got? Well, we've got r0, where does it start off from? They told me it was 19i plus 22j. I've got the velocity, that's 12i minus 16j. And rather than saying r, they've asked us, so r, they've said r is equal to s here. So if I substitute all that work in, uh, I'll get it for a general t. This is the sort of thing that they quite often do. So s is equal to 19i plus 22j plus v lot. So that's plus 12i minus 16j, lots of t. Now that's actually the correct answer. All I'm going to do is, because I know what's coming up later on, I'm going to tidy this up and have it in terms of just, well, let me show you. 19i plus 22j, let's say how many more i's I've got, 12ti, and how many more j's I've got, 16tj, and then collect those together. So I'm actually going to say 19i plus, 12T, uh, plus 12ti, I'm going to call that as 19 plus 12ti. And the same with the j's, 22 minus 16tj. Now, as I say, they would have given us some marks for that one there, but I'm going to be using this part later, quite often we do, uh, with those. So it's quite nice to have it written down like that already. Okay, part C. What does it ask me for for part C? It says, right, okay, we've got this situation. A lighthouse stands in a small rocky island position vector there. Lighthouse obviously isn't going to move. And it says it's not safe for ships to be within 1.3 kilometres of that. Okay, that's for part two. Um, but it does say, find the value of t when s is closest to the lighthouse. So here, even if I hadn't already drawn anything else out, I probably would try and draw a quick sketch to see what's going on with this one. Now, don't take ages of it. It doesn't need to be perfect. I've sort of got some parts that I know. So if it's 19 plus 22, um, 19i plus 22j, that's a reasonable interpretation of what that would be. And then we know that the speed is 12i minus 16j. So that would be going sort of in that direction. Actually, let's just move that over a bit. You can see that I'm doing this. 
uh, on the fly here. So 19i minus uh, plus 22j, and then we've got a speed of sort of 12i minus 16j. So that's where my s is going to be. And then it tells me that the lighthouse is at 26. 15. Now, where's 2615 going to be? I'm just going to, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put it so that it's on the path. It doesn't matter where else I put it, but I'm, I'm going to put it, say, over here somewhere. And then if that's the lighthouse L there, what I want to do is, this is where S is going to be. I want to work out a general vector for SL. As S moves, there would be SL, as S moves, there would be SL. I don't want those individual points. What I want is SL in terms of Ts, and then that's a really powerful thing to be able to answer any question from. So if I want to work out SL, and this is something I always tell my students in terms of taking a shortcut, SL will always be L minus S if that's the position vector of L and that's the position vector of S. The same as AB, is always B minus A, or PQ is always Q minus P. It's a real nice shortcut to have at a stage like this when we're in the middle of a question. I don't want to be spending ages trying to draw anything out like that. Um, so if SL is L minus S, what's that going to be? So SL is going to be, well, L we got told was 26I, it was 2615 here. S, uh, sorry, L was 26I plus 15J. 26i plus 15j, and then minus, we already had the previous thing, didn't we? 19 plus 12ti, and 22 minus 16tj. Now be careful when we're subtracting that, so that's going to be SL, is 26i plus 15j, and then we've got minus 19i minus 12tj, we've got minus 22 plus, sorry, 22j, so to be careful, 22j plus 16tj, and tidy all that up and sort it out. I'm gonna let you do that. I made that that comes to seven minus 12ti and 16t minus seven J. Why is that useful to me? Because now what I can do for this first part is it says, can you find the value uh, when S, when it's closest to the lighthouse, means I want to find the minimum length of that. How am I going to find the minimum length of that? Well, let's get a representation for the length. The length of SL is using that same idea with Pythagoras. It's just going to be the square root of 7 minus 12t squared plus 16t minus 7 squared. And we, we do this technique a lot for finding the, the minimum distance between two points. Um, let's tidy all that up. It's going to be the square root of, and then whatever that all works out to be. You take your time over it. Um, I've got it as being 49 minus 168t plus 144t squared. And then with the other part, uh, 256 t squared minus 224 t plus 49. So just take your time and get that sorted out. Um, tidy that all up. So SL is going to be equal to that. So SL is going to be the square root of, and this is just going to be a quadratic. In this particular case, I got it as being 400 t squared minus 392t, sorry, 392t, plus 98. And then remember what we're trying to do. We want the minimum value that that can be. Well, if I want the minimum value of any function, I'm just going to call it y for a second. If I've got y equals 400t squared minus 392t, plus 98, and I want to work out the minimum, for me, personally, the quickest way I'll do it is differentiate and put it equal to naught. So if I do that, I'm going to get 800t minus 392. So if I put that equals naught, I'm going to get 800t equals 392. t works out to be equal to 0.49 seconds 
And so that's the time. Now, do we want the time when it comes to it or we want the... Yeah, value. So we, that's it already. We want the value of T when S is closest to the lighthouse. They could have asked me for the actual shortest distance. Let's just focus on that for a second there. When I was trying to work out the minimum value of that, if you'd wanted to, you could have completed the square on it. There are other versions of other ways of doing this. Go and have a check of the, um, the mark schemes. They're all... Um, in the, the link to the videos, the description of the videos. But here, I always do this this way. I think it's just an easier way. I, I stick with one method all the way through when I'm doing it. So yeah, I, I've got my answer there for the time. Why didn't I work out that one? Because really, that's the last part now. It says, hence determine whether it is safe for S to continue on its course. So I can work out what the minimum um, distance is. I'm just going to use that T. And if it works out to be less than 1.3 then it's too close to the lighthouse if it works out to be more than 1.3 then it's going to be safe to do whatever the journey part is context of the question so part two let's work that out so i know that um i'm just going to sub that in so um sl is just going to be the square root of and i've got it written down as 400 t squared so let's use that 400 0.49 squared. Use the exact value that you had from before. Minus 392. 0.49 plus 98. So we're just subbing in there to work out what the answer is. You can do it. Just sub it all in. Um, SL, if you do that, actually works out to be 1.4 kilometres and 1.4 kilometers, which is bigger than 1.3 kilometers, therefore it is a safe course, safe to travel. Okay, so yeah, you need to do as many of these ship questions as possible. They're all slightly different variations, but we have a lot of them when we're trying to get a general vector equation or, or a representation of um, finding expression for a position vector, and then quite often we have the distance between two points um, and working out whether it's a maximum, uh, or rather work out whether it's a minimum by doing the work I've just done. So, yep, another one to add to your list of questions just to keep looking at so that we get um, comfortable with those vector equations. Hopefully that will make sense to you all.